Hey everyone, so if you've been following this channel for a while, you would have uh, remembered last year that I created a scoreboard similar to this one over here. Now this was used in a calculus competition at the end of last year. Uh, it worked really well, however there were a few hiccups. So what I've done is I've gone and remade the scoreboard from scratch and just wanted to share with you the changes I've made and how you can build it yourself. Or if you just want to get straight into using the scoreboard i'll leave a link down in the description below so that you can purchase this scoreboard and then it's yours to do with it whatever you please before we get into how i built this let's take a look at how it works so all around me here you'll see different mark boards up the top left here we've got marker one then marker two marker three now these are all different screens that different people get to see so marker one will be sitting with their computer and they'll have uh, team 1 and 2 on their computer and all they have to do is manage the scores for team 1 and 2 And then marker 2 will be somewhere else and they'll be managing team 3 and 4 now you could uh, change this up if you want maybe you might want to have uh, marker 1 take care of four teams so you could have them as marker 1 and marker 2 and you can of course uh, change these names so if marker 1 if uh, their name was I don't know Janet then you can pop their name up there so they know that this is their scoreboard if they also want to take care of teams three and four, you can pop their name in there as well. So let's take a look at when a team gets a question right and how that affects the scoreboard above me. So we've already got some scores uh, input into this screen. Now let's say team one in the top left over there comes along and they get the first question right. Um, they get a mark and currently uh, on top of me, team one, they're fifth down from the top. They have no scores, but let's say that they get uh, the first question right. They now move up in the scoreboard. They're now rank three uh, behind teams 11 and nine and equal with teams four and five. If they go and uh, get another question right, then they'll move up a rank. So they now rank two equal with team nine. And if they get a few more questions, you'll see that their scores keep on increasing and they also move up a rank and move up higher on the scoreboard as they get more and more points. Let's take a look at the same thing, but let's go with team eight. So team eight comes along, they get the first question right, but then the second question, they are a little bit confused and they don't really know how to solve it. So they're going to pass. In our competition, they can have as many tries as they want. And in some cases they do pass and move on to the next question. So there's no way in this Google Sheet to record that they got something wrong or that they passed it. So uh, instead, it's just going to leave blank until they get a correct answer. Let's say that they get question three correct. So we're looking at team eight, which is over in that direction. Team eight here, they currently have a score of one and their marker is marker four. They have passed on question two, so they're going to go try out question three. They come back to their marker and they say, hey, I think I got it right. So if we take a look at team eight here, they're currently rank four, but in uh, position six on the scoreboard. So if they get question three right after passing question two, let's see how that works uh, if they skip uh, a couple of questions. So let's say that they skip questions four and five and then eventually get question six right. We'll see that they're not going to change position on their scoreboard on the scoreboard up there but they will get some reds that will seemingly appear out of nowhere. Those reds are those skipped ones and they don't show up until they get a question right. Now you might be thinking all of these uh, checkboxes, they look really difficult to manage, but really it's just two, two lots of checkboxes and you're only working with one question at a time with two teams. So uh, here's what it looks like from uh, the actual competition. You'll see I've added a few background images uh, for the live stream and I had two cameras uh, active. So you see in the bottom right corner, we have the we have a teacher who is working on his computer, just looking at his scoreboard and all he'll see is this right here. This is uh, everything he'd see. So he's just interacting with his mark sheet. The team comes along and says, hey, can you mark this for me? Yep, can. Uh, or if they get it wrong, hand it back and they can retry or they can pass if they want. So this is all he's seeing. It's not confusing for him at all. And when we did this live in the competition, it worked really, really well. The video on the left is the students working through their problems um, and you can see them every now and then running over to their marker. 
So all of this was designed in uh, Streamlabs, that's the editing software I'm using right now, and the only thing that is the Google Sheets part is the scoreboard above me and what the teachers are using. So let's now take a look at how I built all this and uh, why it is uh, different to just ranking. Here's our scoreboard in Google Sheets. This is what you'd see if uh, you were designing this. Um, down the bottom we have some sheets. The, the one that I'm hiding just behind me is uh, just sheet 3. You can see that down there. Let's call it um, the, the scoreboard. Then we have data and then each of these are the markers. As we go along I've created 8 markers. You can add to that if you want. So before we jump into how this all works, let's take a look at what the markers see. This is the marker sheet, and we have here the, the markers name at the top. You can edit this in this um, view. And then we have a bunch of tick boxes. Now these tick boxes, I've made it so that if they are ticked, then it counts as the number one. The way to do that is go to data, data validation, and then let's actually select a tick box. Uh, data, data validation, and then there's this tick box here. If you check this tick box, then you can put in the values that you want for ticked and unticked. And then uh, once you've applied that to all of them, you can select multiple at a time. And then once you've done that, you can just add them up using the sum formula equals sum. And we'll see that it's each of these. This team one here, that's, uh, that just comes from the data sheet down the bottom, and that's reading the list of team names. So for marker 1, that just says data B2, data B2 is this value here, team 1. So when you're editing your team names, you can pop it in here. So this will be school number 1. If, if we go back to the markers sheet, you can see it's been updated to their team name. Once you've set that up, you can uh, duplicate, copy and paste down to this section here so that you've got two teams and then duplicate the whole uh, tab by right clicking and then click on duplicate. That will create a duplicate which you just need to rename. I'm just going to delete that because I've got all of my uh, markers already set. So once you've duplicated that however many times you need to, you can go over to data Here's where we're going to set up all of the formulas that rearrange the team names. And that's, what's, that's what really counts in the scoreboard, is that if the team is in rank number one, then they move to the top of the scoreboard. So let's just set up all of the fixed data. So we're going to number the markers. We're going to set up the team names. These are I like to put these in purple to say, hey, you can actually write in this. And this uh, team number here, that's their team number. This section here is just all of the questions imported from the mark sheet. So if we take a look at the first one, that's just saying if uh, if this checkbox is ticked, then give us a one. Otherwise, give us a blank. You'll see there's nothing in this else section. Now, because those checkboxes are set up as a number, you might be thinking, well, why has he done that instead of just... Um, importing the information directly. It's, it looks like ex it's exactly the same. It kind of is. However, remember that those checkboxes, if they're unchecked, they will give us a value of zero. So if I paste this across to all of the values, they now show up as zeros. And I don't want that. That's just a personal choice. This raw score here is just the score that the uh, of the students. So that's the sum of all of these. I just realized I've done something silly here. Um, I've done an indirect formula. Let's not do that. Let's just do the sum. I actually did that because I was checking to see if the values were the same in um, both both columns. So I'm just going to copy this down and that'll give us all of our values. This tiebreaker here, uh, that is shown in the mark sheet. TB is the, tie is the tiebreaker. That's not tuberculosis, if you're wondering. The raw rank is these values here, we're going to rank them. If they have the highest score, then they're going to be rank one. We see here that team one has the highest score. So over here, we have a value of one showing because they're the highest. So the, the most basic formula for that is equals rank. The value is this number here. 
the data is what are we comparing that against that's all of this and then we can close it there and that will give us our value of one because that is first in the list you would have seen a whole bunch of numbers just disappeared here and that's because what i've what i had previously was an array formula which means that it's not only going to check this number five against the entire data set it's going to check each of these numbers individually against that data set so the way to set that up is that we're going to jump back into the formula and this time we're going to type in array formula array formula before we do the rank i'm going to say if d2 to d that's the list of values is blank then return nothing otherwise give us the rank of d2 to d this uh, d2 to 17 that's the data set if i leave it as it is then uh, it's not going to work because these cells will all be relative so what i want to do is lock them in by pressing f4 and that's going to give us our dollar signs that means that no matter where it will be in the array formula it's always going to check d2 to d17 and it won't move okay the next part is to work out the duplicate ranks this is because um, if we have uh, we can see there that we have a few fives so i want to list these out as um so what i want to do is instead of just saying these are all five i want to say this is the first five that's the second five and this is the third five now you could do this with the small uh, formula but the way i did it was just uh, add on a number on the end and then we can rank that so to create this uh, decimal we, you can see my formula here i'll just uh, get rid of the extra fancy bits and pieces and just give us what we need so we have z2 we're going to add to that the number of times that this number is repeated the way we're going to set this up is we're going to take z2 which is our number one here and we're going to add to that the nth occurrence so in this case the number one only applies uh, only occurs once the number five applies three times so the first occurrence gives us 5.1 the second occurrence gives us 5.2 and the third occurrence gives us 5.3 the way we set up the formula is we're going to count the number of times this number appears in the list from here down to well in this first case just to here count if z2 which is uh this value here and we're going to lock that in place to uh, in this case z2 so it's just looking at this cell um and we're looking for the value one so this this z2 yeah this z2 is saying look for the value one in this data set then we're going to divide it by 10 so that we can get the uh, decimal value we move on i'm just going to copy this down we then move on to the next one now in this case we can actually see a change so this time we're taking the number z3 which is the number eight and we're going to add to that the uh, first occurrence in this case so it says count if from z2 to z3 how many times does the number eight appear this z3 is talking about the number eight and that's saying how many times does this number appear in this data set you can see the data set now has the purple dotted lines around it so that's the data set it's looking at if we take a look at the next line this is going to be the second occurrence and we can tell that because the data set has been increased that's what this section in here does from z2 to z4 z4 is moving down with the formula z2 is staying in place so we uh, write out this formula and then copy it down i'm just going to make a slight change to this formula so that if um if a value is blank then we're going to return nothing if z2 equals nothing then return nothing and instead of copying it down to here i'm actually going to copy it down all the way and you'll see nothing pops up at the bet at the bottom because this value is blank and that was a little bit uh, to get your head around but trust me it's better than what i had before so now what we've got is we've got a list of numbers that are all unique these will never be repeated even if they were all um, at the same rank these numbers would still be increasing we can actually take a look at that by getting rid of everyone's uh, scores. So now we have one group 
that has a score of 3, one group that has a score of 1, and everyone else has a score of 0. And that gives us a list of all unique values which we can now rank. So just like we did with the earlier rank, we can now rank this one. This is pretty much exactly the same as what we had before, where we have uh, our rank, or just get rid of these extras. So this is saying that this value here is now rank 3. If we copy this down, this will be rank 4, this will be rank 5, and so on. Now I don't want to have to do that myself, I don't want to have to copy it down, uh, just in case I just in case I delete some of the teams. So I'm going to put in that array former. And this time we're going to be taking a look at if this value here is blank, then return nothing, else return that rank. Now in this case it's showing a ref error. That's just saying that there's data in here. So we have to delete that because it's not going to override it itself. Delete that and everything else pops up. Hmm. Ah, okay. Uh, one thing, I, I keep forgetting to do this, uh, but the if statement needs to have um, from AA2 to AA. That fixes that error that popped up at the bottom. So now let's take a look at the scoreboard and the reason for doing all of those calculations. So we have here the team name in the correct order. So this is going from rank 1 all the way down to, in this case, rank 12. Um, I've actually got some hidden rows, so it goes down to 16, but we don't need that many. Now the way it works is if we open this up, we can see the actual rank. So that's saying that team 8 is actually in rank 1, uh, team 2 is in rank, uh, sorry, team 7 is in rank 2, and so on. So these are just uh, values that I've added in, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. This is not the team number from over here. I don't think I've actually used that. So what we're going to do is we're going to import from the data sheet the, the, the team that's rank 1 from over here. So rank 1, if we follow that along, we can see that that's team 8. It's kind of like uh, VLOOKUP, but in SQL language. So the way it works is we type in the formula query, open a bracket, select the data that we want. Now the data we want is uh, from B2 to AB17, that's uh, in the data sheet. So that's from B all the way up to AB. We can actually simplify it a little bit by getting rid of the, um, the numbers. We don't really need those at all. Then we open up some quotation marks and say select B, so in here, B is the team name, where AB, that's our rank over here, is equal to E4, and this is E4, which is our, our actual rank. This is saying who is in the first position. And we copy that down for all of our teams, and then we want to put in these colored values here. So this is just a VLOOKUP, we're just going to say, hey, we're going to look for the word Team8 in, in this data set, and we're going to return the 1, 2, 3, 4th column. So to do that, we do VLOOKUP F4, F4 is our team name here, and then our data, which is, and then our data set, which is in that data page, the scores. This column D4 part, is saying uh, return the value 4 because cell D4 is in column 4. The reason I wanted to use a VLOOKUP here and not a query, you could use a query, but the reason I wanted to use a VLOOKUP is we can uh, highlight all of this and paste it in and we're done. Uh, and of course once you've uh, pasted this into all of these you can paste these down to all of these as well much faster than using query which would have which would have to change each value individually. At the end of the table we've got our uh, total which is just the sum of each of these. Nothing fancy going on there. Uh, so just do the sum of G4 to D, uh, G, G4 to Z4 and then copy it down to all of your cells below. 
And then lastly is the rank. Well, that's just ranking each of these values here. The whole reason, uh, the whole way that this uh, shifting of the teams works according to their rank is this query formula. Of course, you didn't have to use a query formula. You could have used indexed match or uh, VLOOKUP if you rearrange your data section a little bit. Uh, but this is just looking, this is always looking for who is in rank one. And it's going to update every time rank one from our data sheet over here changes. So it's a lot of work for uh, what looks like a little bit of an output, but it's actually got quite some advanced uh, formulas in there. So if you want a scoreboard of your own, you can follow through this video, pause it, rewind it wherever you need to, to get the information that you need. If you just want to have this scoreboard and not have to do the work, feel free to check out my TPT in the description down below. And of course, if you have any questions, you can leave them in the comments or send me an email and I'll get back to you when I can. So uh, thanks for watching. If you think that this has earned your subscription, please consider hitting that uh, subscribe button below, but no pressure. And I hope to see your creations using this sort of uh, template. Thanks.